Uh, hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to configure your business email to work on Gmail. And this would be a substitution for a program like Outlook or Apple Mail. The advantage of using uh, Gmail to send and receive email is that you would have uh, the same email on your desktop and also mobile. Um, so really the only thing that you need to do um, in order to get your email on your mobile device is to download the Gmail email client. Um, so in this video, I'm just gonna cover some of the advantages and then I'll go over some tips and I'll explain the items that you'll need to get started. So like I mentioned, um, one of the major advantages is um, using Gmail as a, a substitute for Outlook Outlook um, does tend to do major updates uh, at least a couple of times per year and sometimes that requires that you reconfigure your Outlook um, and you would just eliminate that with uh, Gmail. Um, and then you can always access your email on your desktop and your mobile device. Um, you would no longer have email storage issues either. Um, and also the ability to be able to search for emails using Google search. You know, Google search is extremely powerful. Um, so being able to do that. So there's a couple things that we would recommend um, before getting this set up. Um, first would be just setting up a new Gmail account. That way you have a new um, account that doesn't have any um, you know, previous mail in there. So it's just a nice clean account. And then you will also need to contact our support team to get your outgoing mail server. So that's something that you would need. And you would just, um, uh, you can jump on chat or you can just uh, send us an email um, and then you can just do that directly from the website. And you will need your um, existing webmail login, uh, your email and password. So um, I've done a, a few things here. I've set up a new Gmail account here. So this is a fresh account. Um, I have access to my webmail uh, account here as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and just jump into the configuration of the account. So to get started, what you would do is you'd click on the settings tab here, and then you would click on see all settings. And then from here, you'd click on account and import. So we're gonna go ahead and add an account. So you would uh, select this option here that says add a mail account. Now, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just move this. Um, I'm just gonna put in the email address that I'm looking to set up. So this is my email. And then you would of course replace it with your own email address. Um, and you wanna select this option by default import emails from my other POP3 account. So you'd click next. And then there's a few things that you need to modify. So the username needs to be the entire email address. Um, password is your email password. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, pop in my email password here. And then for the POP server, um, you'd wanna use the server that the support team um, provides. So I'm gonna go ahead and just enter in my server here. So your um, server may vary from this. It may be the same, it just depends. So the um, support team will provide you with the exact POP server that you'd need to insert. And then uh, there's a few extra things here that you can do. You can label emails when they come in um, to just have your, your email address in it. Um, Another nice thing about this is that you can set up uh, multiple emails. Like I'm doing one right now, but I, I have the ability to set up like sales and info. Um, so you can set up as many email accounts as you'd like. So now this is asking if you want to be able to send using your domain name. And the answer is yes. Um, so you click next here. And it's, it's asking um, how you want to display your name when sending. So I'm going to leave that as is, click next. And then 
Uh, SNTP, this is where you would use the same server that the support team provides. So again, your server may vary. You would leave the port as is, 587, that's correct. The username you'll notice is not correct. You want this to be the entire email address. And then uh, your email password. So I'll go ahead and insert mine here. And I'm gonna go ahead and click Add Account. And then you'll get this prompt that says um, that Gmail has sent you a code that you need to enter in. So I'm gonna move this window to the side for, for the time being. I'm gonna to navigate to my uh, webmail account here. And then you'll see this new Gmail email. And this is the code that we need. So you would just copy the code. I'll bring this window back, insert the code, verify. Now we'll go back to the Gmail account. And you'll see that my uh, new uh, account has been added. And then I'm gonna make this the default. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And if we go back to our inbox here, So there's um, a couple of emails that were in my um, company email, uh, and this is kind of a spam message. It's a advertisement message. So it's, it's classified this message here. Um, and then we'll go back here. This is the verification email um, that Google sent originally. You'll see that it's no longer in webmail and my email is going into Gmail now. So if I were to send a message, you'll notice that it's coming from my company email. So I'm gonna send an email to our support uh, team. A couple things before I send this. You'll notice that the email is coming from my company email. Um, and then you know, as soon as you send it, it goes out, it's in the sent box, and you're pretty much all set up. Um, and then you can you know, set up advanced filters, you know, just like you would with any Gmail account, um, and that would filter your company email. Um, and then you'll notice that Gmail gives you uh, 15 gigabytes of email storage. Um, so you really don't have to worry about um, your company email address filling up. You have 15 gigabytes of email storage with um, Gmail. And they do also offer options where you can purchase additional storage for really affordable rates. Um, I think you can get a terabyte for um, a couple of dollars per month. So I just wanted to just show you how to configure this. And then if you have any questions, you can, of course, get uh, with our support team and we're happy to help. Thanks again.